Nigeria has become a case of where lunatics took over the asylum. And we don't know what lunatics do when you want to take anything back from them. They create a thing as if there's a war. So you run away. If a madman comes there, you say, hey, hey, everybody say, I don't want to touch this madman. <laughs> That's what they're doing. We need to take it back. We need to become as mad as they are and take it back. <laughs> oh, man like Peter O.B., the wordsmith. Ah, God, God, God. We can't miss you. We can't miss you. No, no, no. We can't miss you. Please, this, this may be an old video, but it, it um, expresses the thought and um, ideology behind Peter B's campaign and political journey. And it also establishes the reason why the obedience movement was founded and how it has run. Um, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. And so if you must... If you must take it from them, then you may have to behave like them. And that's why there's been this radical approach to, to everything in this country from the obedient movement. So I wanted to watch this video again as final thought just before we expect the judgment of the presidential election petition, Chabuna sitting in Abuja. Um, um, for, of course, and then Peter B's words and why you must be steadfast and consistent in this on this message and why you must continue to Put your, your eyes strictly on the judiciary as we expect uh, the verdict that would um, shape the democracy and then um, deepen our political uh, journey. Please watch this video and please share this video. Uh, Peter B can never miss words, can never. He has got it. Uh, God has blessed this man. I love you, Peter B. I do. I do. But it's what question I ask myself, and you see our country today, the way it is and everything. Everybody say how we're going to change it. Let's ask ourselves, how did we get here? That is the question. How did we arrive at this junction? Where we're now being talked about in this manner. We now have agitations. Boko Haram. Hesmen. All sorts of agitations from everywhere. Whether it's in the east, in the west, everywhere. And I can tell you it's going to worsen. This is what you have when you have. It is cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years. And it's not going to stop because you have millions of your people. I was just talking to somebody this morning. And I said, listen, people are protesting in Iran. They're not protesting in Nigeria. But people don't know that it, the protest will come. If Iranians can protest, Iran has a GDP of 400 billion. With 79 million people, their per capita is 6,050 naira, 50 dollars. And they're protesting. Nigeria per capita is 2,000. So the person with 6,000 is protesting. We're not. Iran generates 74,000 megawatts of electricity, we generate four. And they're protesting. Iran has the Unemployment of 11% and youth unemployment of 25%. We have unemployment of 19.8% and youth unemployment of 61%. So those youths will protest one day. Those of us who happen to be lucky to live in Ikea and Victoria Island, I said to them every day, if we don't look for food for those who live in Ajegunle, one day we will not be living So my people, what you need to do is, I believe that you must invest in Nigeria. You must bring your investment. What else can you do? Well, above all, the last, last request is most critical. We must change the managers of Nigeria. And somebody asks, how about your life? You ask that question. You know why I ask that question? Nigeria has become a case of where lunatics took over the asylum. And we don't know what lunatics do when you want to take anything back from them. They create a thing as if there's a war. So you run away. If a madman comes there, you say, hey, hey, everybody say, I don't want to touch this madman. <laughs> That's what they're doing. We need to take it back. We need to become as mad as they are and take it back. They can't manage it. You have a critical problem. 
The managers of your country, I'm not talking about president or governor, anybody. Fella hit it. The lower people, none of you knows who is in your local government. Every local government in Nigeria receives 100 million naira every month. Go and look for their chairman. They are nowhere to be found. And the same thing goes with your state. You have a situation today where people are owing salary for seven months and they are celebrating their birthday. How can you say a thing like that? How can you be celebrating when you've, you're, you've ruined people's life? People are dying and you're celebrating and people are watching it on TV. It's a crisis. And the only people that can stop that crisis is you. They can't stop it. It's telling people in lunch that when I, I found it amazing that even people in America are part of the problem. As governor, I come here, you know what people tell me? This man bought this house. This man bought this house. Where are you going to buy your own? Why would I buy a house in America? I don't live in America. I have nothing to do with America. It only cost me $200 to come here and go. Why would I buy a house? Americans should live in America. I'm a Nigerian. I live in Onitsha. That is where I should live. I go to South Africa. I go to everywhere. They say, buy a house in South Africa. Buy How many South Africans have bought a house in Nigeria? How many Americans have bought a house in Nigeria? So why would Nigerians come here? You live here. Yes, you can own a house. Yeah. But not people. I come here as governor. And Nigerians will tell you, oh, let's bring somebody and have a party. Why would I leave Nigeria to come and do party here? No way. I should come here as a beggar for you to give me something to take home, not to come and celebrate here. I have people who need food in the country. And Nigerians are celebrating here. And you go there and become them His Excellency. When you should push them to go back and do their work at home. <laughs> so start telling them, if your governor comes here or local government chairman, do not be part of celebrating him. Tell him to go home and fix what he's supposed to do. Don't encourage him to waste his resources. He didn't come with his money. He came with your money. We're asking you to bring back your own. What we need to do is to manage that which is there effectively. Your country, to tell you how bad your country has gone. In 1980, Nigeria as a country had a foreign reserve of 10.5 trillion. Five, five billion dollars. 10.5. China is 10. South Korea that somebody mentioned here is 3. 3 billion. The country was far bigger than South Korea. It had more money than China. China had a population of today. China population is 1 billion, 317. Nigeria is only 186 million. But what is happening Today, China has in savings 3 trillion and we have 30. We had 10. They had 10. We had 10.5. They had 10. Today, they had 3 trillion. We, had, we have 30. 1% of what they have. Today, South Korea savings is 400 and something billion and we have 30. What went wrong here? And I can show you nations on nations. We've, we are supposed to be part of the so-called authors of nations. Now we have put us to mint nation. We're supposed to be now mint nation because we miss where we're supposed to be, where China, everybody is. They said we are not part of BRICS nation. They put South Africa instead. Why did they put South Africa? I've asked that question. You don't have the infrastructure. You don't have what it takes. But look at the brick nations that we're put into. If you look at the four brick nations, it's Mexico, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey. Look at all our look at our look at our, our GDPs. Ours is not even half of the list. The GDP of Mexico, which is not there that they call anything, is one point. Three trillion. Mexico has today savings. Their reserve is about 170. Of course, you can go there. Both inflation, unemployment, everything is under 10, is under 10%. Their market capitalization is over 400 
billion. Indonesia, which has more population than us, a population of 250, has 1 trillion GDP. I have $110 billion in reserve. And of course, can go, their market is over 400. Market capitalization of their stock market is over 400. Turkey, which is smallest among them, 80, 80 million people. At 895 billion GDP. Their reserve is over 100 billion. Nigerian GDP is 400 billion. And on top of it, our government have the most wasteful people in charge in the world. We're in a state of Florida. This state has a GDP of 300, 700 and $93 billion. That is to wise the GDP of Nigeria. Your richest state in America is California with a GDP of $2.6 trillion, six times Nigerian GDP. With a per capita of 50000 Nigeria is two. Can governor of California drive five vehicles at a time? <laughs> no, I'm asking you a question. So we need to fix it. Can governor of California use five vehicles at a time? No. In your place, they use 30 and call it convoy. <laughs> if it's not madness, tell me what it is. I think madness is when somebody doesn't have a cloth. No, there's five of for madness. That's what we need to fix first. So I want you to be part of that change agent. So let, for like saying. Let people have souls and care for their people. That is what we need in our country. We need people who can think. How did China change? What happened to China? How did they change? Even in the, just in the year 2000, China had been able to build from year 2000 to, year 2000, to move from go and check their GDP in the year 2000 was just 1 trillion. Today it's 12. Where is that own still 400? Why are we not investing in the right thing? Today everybody knows everybody is investing in education and all that. We're not investing. People are telling why the problems we have solved in Nigeria. How can it solve? 60% of the people, are children out of school live in sub-Saharan Africa. 10 million live in Nigeria. Yes. You can go and check your records. I saw somebody the other day. A particular state in Nigeria... Zamfara. Let me just call it. In the last year, Neko had only 110 students. Only 24 passed. Ah. Instead of 5 million people. They are now. <laughs> 24. When our state has almost 200,000 for the same exam, it won't work. Is Nigeria. Every part of Nigeria is important to us. We have to ask that question. Why? What is happening? So, when people, when now Nigerians staying here, your investment is critical, but what is more critical? That you become part of the change agent. On top of this type of situation, you still have people like me who are elected. Only in Nigeria, you elect people. People ask me now while we're eating lunch, what is the problem? I said, the problem is the people. It's so only in Nigeria that you elect, people, you elect people. They don't have car, they don't have anything. Six months, they build a house, buy 20 cars, and call it for Thanksgiving, and people will go there. <laughs> and they will be praying in the church, telling God to bless them. And the bishop will preach in that wherever they got the money, you should give them more when they have to call police. Because they know where the money came from. Everybody knows where the money came from. But they are still celebrating it. It comes to America and buy a house. And they said, if you see his house, and it's in choice areas. When he's in Washington, they tell you this place, this man owns the house here. In New York, this man owns the house here. With whose money? Let him show you his business. His daytime job. That earned that money. In which is 
Ichibshuban John, who is doing of advertisement, wants to buy a house in the best area of the world. Let him go and buy it. But for God's sake, why would Peter be come and buy the choice area in Washington when he didn't own it before? A governor built a house that is unbelievable. And they asked, they say, I used to have the money. Why didn't you build it before? Hey, wait a minute. What are you telling us? And you're owing us salary. Even if you had the money before, you would have kept quiet. The rascality must stop. That's what we need to do first. Let's deal with this rascality first. It's when we stop this rascality that we can now there's opportunities in Nigeria, my dear people. As for investment, I know you're worried about the country. You're worried about this. Let me tell you, the opportunity you have in Nigeria when it comes to investment is not anywhere in the world. It's not anywhere in the world. I'm sorry you live in America. The reason why I'm saying this is that if we have good managers, even when people talk about borrowing, like our friend has said, there's nothing wrong in borrowing. You live in an 18 trillion economy, isn't it? America is 18 trillion GDP. But they're owing 21 trillion. <laughs> Simple. Even China that I mentioned is owing 5 trillion. The entire debt of Africa is under 200 billion, which means Africa can borrow more. But who is going to manage this new money we are going to borrow? Is it the same character that is there now? No. So when you're talking about borrowing money, the greatest tragedy your country is facing today is that the managers of the country have never managed anything in their life. If a man has not created wealth or managed anything, he cannot manage public one. You suddenly find somebody who has never seen one billion and then throw him and say he's a governor to manage 12. Go and check it all over the world. All lottery winners went bankrupt. <laughs> 